Hello guys, today we'll be taking a look at the ASUS ZenBook 14 UX425e. If that sounds familiar, that's because we have previously reviewed the ASUS ZenBook 14 UX425, which packed an Ice Lake processor. Today, it is pretty much the same laptop, but with the Tiger Lake processor under the hood. I did think that the Ice Lake powered the ASUS ZenBook 14 UX425 was very close to perfection, with a timeless design, good performance, great battery life, an excellent display and a very comfortable keyboard and trackpad combo, as well as its impressive expandability with dual Thunderbolt 3 ports. So, will this new Tiger Lake powered ASUS ZenBook 14 UX425e impress me even further, with its Velo Cove CPU cores and Iris Sexy graphics, or will it be more of the same? Well, let's find out. As usual, let's start with the unboxing. The packaging here is pretty premium and does seem like an upgrade over the previous generation of Zen Books. But of course, it is what's inside that matters when it comes to packaging and there's quite a nice spread here. You get a USB-C power adapter that can pump up to 65 watts into the laptop for fast charging, a nice laptop sleeve, your usual documentation as well as a USB-C to headphone jack adapter. Yes, this laptop doesn't have a headphone jack. Moving on, let's take a look at the ASUS ZenBook 14 itself. Design-wise, ASUS didn't try to change things up and that's good. The Ice Lake powered ZenBook 14 was a slick machine and so is the Tiger Lake powered version we have here today. On the lid, there's a nice concentric circle pattern that's the signature of the ASUS ZenBook series. I do quite like the offset logo rather than having it in the center like ASUS used to do in their much older designs. The bottom of the laptop is definitely not the most sexy part of this laptop, but shakes things up a little by going with angular edges. There's a nice intake vent along the center to allow the cooling system to draw in fresh air and ASUS decided to use an array of holes instead of the longer slits that they preferred in earlier designs. A similar decision was applied to the speaker grills, which will output their sound at around 45 degrees to bounce off your desk. Opening up the ZenBook 14, you will first lay your eyes on the screen, which has shockingly thin bezels. And yet, ASUS managed to cram in not only a webcam above the display, but also an IR facial recognition system. More on that later. Then, there's the keyboard. While most laptops will have their keyboards in a matching colour or just plain old black, ASUS went with grey. Interesting decision indeed. Further down, there's the ASUS number pad which is a very nifty bit of innovation that ASUS borrowed from their gaming machines. To make it more ergonomic in use, ASUS designed the ZenBook 14 with the ErgoLeaf hinge which raises the laptop at a slight angle. This makes it more comfortable for you to type on the laptop when you have it on a desk, in addition to increasing the clearance under the laptop to allow it to breathe easier. Next up, Benchmarks. Considering that it is a Tiger Lake powered machine, I do believe many of you are interested to know how it performs. We are too, so let's get to it. First up, the storage. As ASUS is using the Intel 660p QLC based drive, performance isn't exactly great. Sequential reads are packed at around 1.6GB per second, while read is around 960MB per second. Random speeds are fine, although they won't match the premium SSDs in the market today. Moving on, let's take a look at the CPU performance in Cinebench R20. The new CPU architecture in the Intel Core i7-1165 G7 allows it to outperform most of the ultra portables we have tested, including its predecessor in Cinebench R20. Tiger Lake does offer a nice performance boost and most of it comes from the ability to clock higher than Ice Lake. The only area which we see it falter behind the competition is in the multi-threaded test, as it is nigh impossible to make up for double the cost even if you increase IPC significantly. But the biggest gains are probably in the graphics division as you can see it easily beat even the MX250. Intel definitely has the fastest integrated graphics right now with the Intel Iris Xe graphics and it is nice to see them beat AMD's APU for once as AMD's Radeon Vega integrated graphics has led integrated graphics benchmark charts for quite some time. It has made Nvidia's entry level MX GPUs largely irrelevant unless you have a use for CUDA cores or something. Meanwhile, over in PC Mark, we see it gauge the overall performance of the machine and here we see the ASUS ZenBook 14 offer excellent performance in the essentials and productivity segments while taking a step back in digital content creation. Digital content creation generally prefers more cores and beefier GPUs, so the ASUS ZenBook 14 doesn't shine here. But that doesn't mean you can't do content creation, it just means that it won't be as great an experience as you would probably get from a beefier machine. On top of all that performance, it also offers pretty good battery life. With such performance gains, it is quite impressive to see that the ASUS ZenBook 14 UX425e only loses so little in terms of endurance versus its predecessor. Here we see them pitted head to head and we can see that the biggest gains are in graphics performance. Up to 45% improvement in superposition is no joke at all. And of course on top of that, we still get a nice CPU performance bump, so overall it is a pretty big upgrade. 
13% worse battery life than its predecessor is probably negligible because you're still looking at more than 9 hours away from the plug with the UX425e. And while we can consider the digital content creation score by the UX425e pretty mediocre, it is still a significant upgrade over the previous generation ASUS ZenBook 14 UX425. The ZenBook 14 UX425e offers an overall 10% better score in PCMark. And now, the user experience. As mentioned earlier, the laptop features an IR Facial Unlock feature that works with Windows Hello. Unlike their older implementations, this one here works really fast. Once you have set it up, it will almost instantly recognize your face once you arrive at the lock screen and unlock the laptop. During the process, you can see the IR beam flashing, but because it is so intuitive and fast, you might actually miss it in normal daily use. While previously I would have preferred a fingerprint scanner, the ZenBook 14's facial recognition is fast enough to satisfy me, and the fact that I don't have to move my hand to put my finger on a fingerprint scanner is probably a strong motivator for me to choose the ASUS ZenBook 14's facial recognition over any fingerprint-based security option. Looking down slightly, you will find a nice display. It is pretty standard, measuring in at 14 inches and spotting a regular 1080p resolution, but it is a quality one. Just look at these photographs. It is also quite good for videos as you can see here. And in case if you haven't, make sure to subscribe to us so you can watch our videos as soon as we publish them. But of course, observing a screen through a camera is not the ideal way of picking your next laptop if screen quality is important to you, so we did run some tests as well. The display is capable of 99.7% sRGB, 68.7% Adobe RGB and 70.6% DCI-P3 gamut volume, which is pretty great. While you might argue that 100% sRGB doesn't quite cut it anymore, most of the content online is still calibrated for sRGB viewing, so the ASUS ZenBook 14 is still perfect for content consumption as well as some light content creation. Speaking of content creation, the keyboard on this is actually pretty Hello, hello, I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, seems like the background music is not really working, so let me see if I can do anything about that. Hmm. So I need to pump it up a bit. So yeah, apparently background music is not working for me right now. So yeah, hello, welcome to episode 132 of Border Life, and today we actually have a lot of tools, so we are going to be checking out a laptop that is the from CES 2022 and this is actually the second 14X OLED from ASUS. So this is the 14X, ASUS ZenBook 14X OLED Space Edition and previously you guys have probably seen us unbox the ASUS ZenBook 14X OLED which is powered by the 11th gen processor. So this is obviously uh, being launched at CES 2022 means that this is powered by the 12th gen processor which uh, there's still things that we can't talk about but yeah that's what you need to know. So of course, aside from being powered by the 12th gen processor, this is a laptop that is more interesting than the usual because this is literally the space edition. So yeah, and it's also a limited edition. So it is apparently meant to commemorate 600 years, I think. 600, sorry, not 600 years. Then the 25th year of the Asus P6300 uh, laptop into space, which was a, it spent 600 days in space. So yeah, this is to commemorate that success, that momentous success of sending a laptop into space. And thus we have this space edition laptop that's very fancy. So as you can see right now, the box itself is already quite fancy. And I don't think you get this type of box with any other Asus laptop or even ROG. I haven't seen such a fancy outer packaging yet, I think. Yeah, you don't really, usually with ROG, you get the ROG logo, but yeah, nothing too fancy. So you have this... I don't exactly know what it is, probably it's related to space because everything on this laptop is actually related to space because yeah, it's yeah, it's literally called Space Edition. One of the most unique things about the box is that you actually get a cloth thing, a cloth handle. So instead of your usual, you know, plastic handle, this one actually comes with a cloth handle. I'm not sure why, but well, kudos to the attention to detail from Asus. And let's just pop this open. So to open it you can see that there is this space edition printed here as well as the separate box which actually is a lot more premium so you can see this is the actual packaging of the laptop and it looks different from any other laptop you have seen so with zen books usually you get a nicer box uh, some of them do some of them don't but this this is definitely on a different level altogether 
you can see that it's all shimmery and stuff as well and yeah very nice very unique packaging space edition is this virgin atlantic crossover i don't know whether it is what crossover is this maybe you know they should work with nasa nasa so yeah actually they went to space with nasa so maybe it is nasa edition not really virgin atlantic can this beat the Zephi acronym? Definitely, is, I think the Zephi acronym is one of the worst design laptops. So yeah, the Alan Walker Special Edition for the G14 is very nice though, uh, which really, really makes me question why didn't Asus just work with Alan Walker in the first place and decided to work with acronym, which, yeah, maybe they should have a Malaysian edition that they work with Stone & Co. Since, yeah, uh, as you guys know, uh, ROG is working with Stone & Co. So maybe we should have a Stone Den Co laptop instead of acronym. Maybe. Just putting it out there. So if Asus, if you decide to act on that, maybe cut me in. So yeah. <laughs> what do I do? Let's get this box out of the box. So, yep. Very pretty. Yeah, belakang monitor at the screen. So this is like the evolution of the G14, I guess, because you see the G14, which I'm using right now has this anime matrix so this actually has an oled display it's pretty much like the rog phone if you guys know the rog phone 5 pro and rog phone 5 ultimate they have this uh pm oled rog vision display on the back of their body so this one behind the screen you have a zen vision because this is a zen book not a rog laptop and yeah it supposedly is quite nice i haven't checked it out actually so i just received it today so definitely have to check it out So even the charger box comes with a, another sleeve which kind of shows its exclusivity and it opens how? Oh, so it opens like this. There's a charger there. I'm not sure whether it's supposed to be angled or that but if it is, I think it is. That's very cool attention to detail. I've not seen this much attention to detail in a laptop for a very long time. So yeah, this is the 100 watt USB PD charging part charger and the power cable. So this is not a Malaysian unit. It's actually sent over from Taiwan. So you have this weird plug. Obviously, if you get this in Malaysia, if it comes to Malaysia, you will get the Malaysian UK plug. So yeah. That's nice. Is that the Dyson? Yeah, that's kind of interesting actually. Could be the dice. Oh, it's actually meant to be a laptop stand. So if you look at this sleeve here, it actually tells you how to use it like a stand. So apparently you're supposed to open it. Put it down on the table. Like that. I'm not sure whether you guys can actually see it. Can you? Yeah. So this is the way it's supposed to act like a stand for your laptop. So previously, the last laptop I've seen Isus do this for was for the ROG Zephyrus ROG Zephyrus Duo 15 SE yeah it's kind of a long name but yeah the 15 SE had this kind of packaging as well the charger box was also designed to be a laptop stand so that you know you can have it at a more ergonomic angle but to be honest with Asus laptops they usually have ergo lift so I I really didn't find the need for a extra stand and i think this laptop does have a go lift as well because the previous gen did so kind of interested to see what the laptop has to offer i'd be quite surprised if it doesn't have what have a go lift though because that's like one of the zen book hallmarks and i think when it comes to rog it's definitely a lot more rare but the, yeah the g14 has it so yeah so i'm going to show off this this shiny little i don't know what icon is that but yeah Voting well, video Indonesia. So yeah, Indonesia probably got it earlier than us. But yeah, this is the first view of it in Malaysia. So there is actually a card in there, I don't know why. It's this plastic card. Which tells you the model number. So in 1998, they had the P6300. And in 2022, they have the UX5401, which is this laptop. So what about in the future? Interesting. What does the text say? We are curious to explore the world and go beyond. Okay. Kind of cringy, but I guess it's fine. Are the code the Yeah, I, I I kind of know they apparently did a lot of like hints 
like hidden meaning codes and stuff in the on the design of the laptop, which uh, alludes to the fact that you know it's a space, it's a space edition, and also it ties back to the P sixty three hundred of the past, as well as you know I don't know the space missions twenty fifth year anniversary and stuff. So yeah, this is the laptop. I don't know why am I doing it off camera. I'm not doing anything abusive. Don't worry. So yeah, is what's this color called? Ready. Hope to see you guys doing benchmark on the new other lake. Yeah, we would definitely want to do that as well. But uh, currently, we can't share details with you guys. There are stuff that we have to adhere to. Oh, they went with plastic for the glass. Oh no no no. So yep, this is the lid. You can see this is the Zen Vision display. So it's a 3.5 inch display, which is quite sizable, I would say. And it's monochrome. So if anyone is expecting to see colors on it, it's not going to happen. And this is what's called the Zero G titanium color. And yeah, it's actually made of aluminum, but aluminum, aluminum. Yeah, but it has this nice color. And there's also this Art Astra Per Aspera, which I don't remember to space and beyond, I think it means. Does it actually mean that? <laughs> and yeah, down here also you get this text which says Space Station MIR stuff. I don't actually know whether it's focusing. We did change the camera, so... Oh, it's not actually that visible. Let's see whether if we change to the other camera, it'll be more visible. Not really also. Oh, this is, this is a more, quite visible angle. So... Yeah. Space Station Mir 1990. 1986 to 2001, the Zen books. I don't know why is it redacted. Kind of interesting. Definitely quite a bit of lore to this laptop. We have to Google about this. Sorry, late. Hey, right, no problem. We're just getting started. So this is the laptop. Oh, they actually went with the contrast space bar and power button. So you have like the bronze pink color. You guys can see it. Yeah, this camera is not that good with color. Let's switch back. Ta-da! Pinkish color. Very nice. I don't... I don't know whether it's actually pink or bronze, but... Yeah, I think it's probably bronze. Which I do like. I do... have a brass... brass... brass keyboard... plate, which looks very nice in gold. So this is probably nice as well. So, yep. And I think this also has the number pad feature, which is... Pretty much a standard for all Asus laptops. So design-wise, I would say that this laptop's main design feature is definitely its Zen Vision display, which is why we're going to have to turn it on to pick it up. Hopefully there is charge to it. Yep, there is. On the sides, there aren't much ports to talk about. It's the typical Asus uh, ZenBook layout recently. So they actually went with this two Thunderbolt with one USB-A port, which... It's nice on uh, Ultra Portable, but they actually also used it for their larger uh, ZenBook Pro Duo 15, which uh, left me wondering why, because there's so much space. But yeah, on here, it's quite nice. You get two Thunderbolt, as you can see, HDMI as well, full-sized, so you don't have to worry about uh, dongles. And if you want to use it with a mouse or keyboard, you know, you have this port, this here as well. This USB-A port. So this laptop is definitely improved over the current 14X. So the current 14X only has one side of cooling, but this one has two. You can see these two vents are both for cooling. So yeah, and one thing that was apparently noted to be quite interesting was the fact that we have a micro SD card slot right here, but because of the way that it blends in with the rest of the vents, it can get confusing to some people. So yeah, if you want to use this laptop with a micro SD card, Make sure to look properly before you connect your micro SD card so that you don't jam it into the uh, exhaust vents instead, which would be quite odd. But yeah, overall, definitely a very nice design. And it's touchscreen as well, I think. Is it? Yep, it is touchscreen. And so you have a glossy cover over the OLED display. And this is a 2.8K OLED display which, uh, with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so you get more viewing area. And it also supports 90 hertz, so it's a bit smoother than your usual 60 hertz, 
obviously it's not gaming standard this isn't a gaming laptop by any any means so this is a 12th gen i think it only runs on integrated graphics so while the elder lake graphics as far as i know it's still the iris xe graphics which was featured on the 11th gen uh, which is powerful but definitely not something i would consider to be gaming great you can probably get by with some you know dota 2 or maybe some csgo but yeah definitely not not something that i would consider a gaming laptop but I digress and I would say the 90Hz display does feel a bit better when you're scrolling and stuff. But yeah, I think a bit too much talk about the rest of the laptop. Let's take a look at the display. So this is the Zen Vision display. And you can see there is an astronaut falling through the area. I don't actually know how to customize it. Is it in my Asus? I guess it's in my Asus because there's no other software. The little screen can be customized. Yeah, I think the main reason why there's a screen is for it to be customizable. There's no reason for it to be not customizable. But I don't exactly know how yet. Because, yeah. Is it here? Is it here? Customization. Where is the customization? Yeah. The Zen Vision, nope, there's no Zen Vision app. Got it. Exclusives. Oh, yeah. So this is area two. I did it. It's in the software. Yes, it's in my Asus app. And it's on a, actually, a very conveniently located. It's located in the customization tab, which is where you would expect to find it. So, like with ROG, I'm used to finding it in Armory Create, you know, so this, it only has my ASUS, but in, it's right in my ASUS, so yeah, definitely no complaints in the area. So, customizability. So, we have how many presets? So, we have two, one, two, three, four presets. Oh, sorry, six presets. So, there are like six, four teams and two more functional clock. So let's let's check it out. Okay, we're gonna change the speed or show text. Okay, interesting. What else can we do? Personal label settings. Oh, okay, just the brightness. If you turn, if you close it in ten seconds, it will turn off the. What do you call it? So this is the boot. Boot animation. Cool. Pretty nice. This is the maximum brightness. I don't know whether you guys can actually see it. Yeah, it's definitely bright enough. It's a bit flickery, right? But that's that's just because of the OLED refresh rate not being as high, I guess, as the actual screen. So you might see it on the camera as it's flickering, but to be honest, in real life, it doesn't. So yeah. animation let's try the clock one so this one it should just transition between the different effects oh it doesn't change what not flying oh yeah so this apparently <laughs> is to show the person opposite you what the time is so in case if you go out and work with your colleague i guess you can use this mode you know to show your friend what time it is so that you know it is time to go then it is time to go customize can we change create let's create something oh you can use you can put images on there i don't i don't actually have an image let me just look for this image that's amazing. Now I need to look for for this image to put on there. Just give me a little bit of time because I didn't prepare. My bad. All right. Eject the pen drive because I'm a nice person. Presentation timer. Yes. Maybe, I don't think it's a timer, it's a clock, so maybe you can use it, you know, to 
show off the time so that you know the lecturer knows it's time to go. Uh, that's odd. I can't scale the image. So apparently I can't scale the image and I can only crop the image, which is very odd. So you can see the UI here. I don't know where it's focusing. So yeah, you can see that, that window around the folder logo. Yeah, apparently I can't scale the image to fit the screen, but I can crop the image which is kind of odd i was hoping that you know i could like you know crop it down so that i mean shrink the image a bit scale it so that it could fit but i guess that's not really on the cards right now hopefully they release a software update that will fix it because i do know that the asus team is quite hard working when it comes to releasing updates for this type of customization thing because the g14 gets a lot of updates for newer animations you know more features and stuff and between the First time I actually checked out the G14 in 2019 and the current 2020 2021 version. It was wait, sorry, I checked it in 2020. My bad. So yeah, the 2021 version is actually a lot of difference and they do add features every once in a while as well. So like pre-made animations are a thing that comes to the G14 every once in a while. So hopefully they will update this feature because as you can see, you can't see the entire Pogda logo, but you do know it's Pogda, lah, so I guess it's fine. Yeah, and they also preset animations here where, you know, they literally just help you create the animation so that you don't have to design your own GIF. So, like, for example, what I have on my G14 here is actually based off our video, you know, our folder intro. So, yeah, it's actually a video made into a GIF. And then I had to, you know, to make sure that it looks seamless, I had to edit the video so that it's back to back. It just expands and closes. So, yeah, with the ZenBook 14X OLED Face Edition, you don't have to do that. It creates an animation for you. So you can see it comes in, goes out, just, you know, very cool, very fancy. What about this? Yeah. Can you increase the speed of the animation if you want, you know? So. Oh, this, those cannot. For the images, you cannot. You can turn it on and off as well. So this would be off. It would be on. So yeah, I think if you want to save a bit of battery, you can turn it off. But I do expect that this PM OLED display won't be consuming too much battery because it's an OLED display, the first thing. And it's also monochrome. And it's kind of small. I mean, it's not like it's going to consume too much battery. I think, if anything, the screen will definitely, I mean, the main screen will definitely consume more power than, you know, this tiny screen. But of course, I would say that it is a very cool customization, like, just like the G14's anime metrics. The only difference is that it's small and it's on a ZenBook, which I think is kind of interesting as well, because for a ZenBook laptop to have this level of customizability, this bring a smile to my face, I guess, because as you guys know, I really love the G14, and part of it is because, uh, aside from it being this portable, it is the fact that it is customizable. So this also being customizable is a very nice thing. Uh, unfortunately, I think that you probably would have a better time if it was inside the laptop, but yeah, I mean, this is a very good step forward to that. You get a, something you can customize so that you can show your uniqueness on the outside of your laptop because I do know that a lot of people like to sticker bomb their laptops. I don't think that's a good thing to do because, you know, laptop laptop leads do get warm and, you know, if it gets too warm, you know, your sticker glue will melt and then when after some time, if you decide that you want to change the look, it doesn't look good. Maybe some people might go with dbrand, but, you know, when your laptop looks this good already, you don't need to go with the brand and to customize it all you need to do is change the zen vision display so put whatever you want there like for example for me it's of course folder because yeah this is what i do so yeah i think in terms of what this has i actually don't know the specs as well the only thing i know is, is that it has the zen vision display so another thing that i think it has is some kind of resistance so yeah 
this laptop is actually built to meet US space uh, standards instead of the military standards. So a lot of ASUS laptops, as you guys know, already meets the US military standard 810H now. So this actually meets the US space system command standard SMCS 016A testing protocol. So part of them is that it can be operational in extreme temperatures of negative 24 to 61 and also vibrations of 20 to 2000 hertz. So yeah, unlike the other laptops which are military standard rated, those laptops can withstand uh, high temperatures, but they are meant for like high temperatures when the laptop is not operational. So when it's off, they can withstand those temperatures without you know not being able to boot the next time. So this one, you can use it in negative 24, which is freeze, free, below freezing and definitely way too cold for anyone to stand outside and use a laptop and also at 61 degrees which is also way too hot for anyone to stand outside and use a laptop so before the laptop dies when you use it you will die first so yeah this is a laptop to get if you are always living in the kind of extreme situations and also it can withstand the vibrations so you know obviously without hard disk i did i guess most laptops should be able to withstand vibrations a lot better but yeah this one is actually tested to meet I mean, built to meet those standards, uh, 20 to 20, 20 to 2000 hertz vibrations when it's working. So, yeah, it's definitely not dying. <laughs> Off the main screen and use the rear screen as the main. Well, unfortunately, you can't do that because there is no feature for that. Uh, it would be cool, I know, if you can use it as a second screen, you know, like how screen pad is. So, that would be a cool idea, I think, you know, being able to send your display to the rear screen, maybe for a quick peek of whatever you're doing to someone behind you, but sorry, not, not behind you, uh, in front of you. But yeah, that's not something that you can do. So let's just go through the specs because I can go through the specs. This is a 12th gen Intel Core i7 12700H. And I think the H is why we have the extra vents on the side. So the previous laptop had the 11th gen uh i7 1165g7 if i'm not mistaken so yeah it's not exactly like a super power hungry processor and it's like what 15 to 28 watts of tdp so this is a 12700h which starts from 35 watts so this is actually a gaming grade cpu but yeah there's no gpu so but still you get a lot of performance in this laptop and it's packed to 32 gigs of ram so definitely, if you want to take this laptop with you as your creator machine and whatnot, this is definitely well prepared for that. And yeah, I mean, it's literally designed to survive space. So I think it would definitely survive the journey in your bag or whatever. So yeah, and it has one TB SSD. I don't know whether this is PCIe 4 or PCIe 3. I think it might be PCIe 4 because yeah, I mean, the 12th gen does support PCIe 4. So yeah. Can you show Excel sheet in the secondary screen? That as I mentioned earlier, it would be a pretty nice idea. I mean, like when you're talking to someone across, you want to show some data. Unfortunately, you can't. And probably, I think it's probably for a better reason because if you have used a laptop with the Asus screen pad uh, designs, usually you will be able to move the information from the first screen to the secondary screen and vice versa. But the issue is sometimes uh, the fact that you you cannot pull the windows all the way to the bottom. It does make it kind of frustrating to use and if you have this i don't know how which side you will put it so it will be the left side or the right side so yeah and anyway 3.5 inches is way too small for you to show any reasonable amount of information in excel anyway so yeah it's kind of moot but i would say it would be interesting uh, at the very least i think the most interesting thing that you could do is probably create a video uh for this expect ratio i don't i don't know how wide it is but yeah, you can create a video for this aspect ratio. It'd be quite nice. It's actually flickering in real. I don't know why these animations are flickering. That's kind of odd because, yeah, the actual animation shouldn't flicker. I guess probably the image is just too big. But if we apply the normal one, it doesn't. Why does it say do not disturb? Later you, see, later, you see a prawn show around screen. I mean, why not? I don't know why does it say do not disturb. Is it because I mean do not disturb mode? 
I have no idea what mode am I in. So this runs uh, Windows 11 out of the box. I, I'm still kind of having mixed feelings with Windows 11. I don't know about you guys. Personally, still not a really big fan of Windows 11. But why does it say do not disturb though? Okay, now it doesn't. This one does. Why? Is it touch? No. Interesting. What does it say now? Yes. Oh, so I guess there are still some modes that are not programmed properly, I guess. It's showing text instead. Which is kind of odd. Oh, you can type text as well with various fonts. You have to save it to template and then you can use it. Oddly, the, the animations doesn't seem to load and it's instead it's loading text. So I guess that's something that I have to check out later. But yeah, so you can use it to put your tag as well. So let's say if you're doing something public with this laptop, you can definitely put your name there so that, you know, maybe at, the, at Starbucks when you want to, you know, go get your coffee. So when you tell them your name and then you can put the name on the back there for your laptop. Kind of an age case scenario, but I guess if you have this, you can do that if you want. And it's definitely a lot higher resolution than uh, anime metrics, so it can show a lot more text. But of course, it's only monochrome, la, which I think anime metrics is also the same, and so it really doesn't matter. Maybe the next gen will have, if Zen Vision picks up pace, maybe if people really like the second display, you can maybe hopefully hope for a RGB version instead in the next generation. The screen Rosa ID. It isn't Rosa. You can see that it is showing whatever I type there. It's just that I don't know why it decided that two of those modes are actually text. So yeah, I think it's probably with the software. I guess because, well, this laptop was only announced at CES 2022 and it isn't actually available for purchase yet. So I guess part of that might be part of the reason. So some of these teams just don't work. Does it work now? Nope. Yep, it's still showing text. Hopefully the flickering effect can be minimized with a less complicated source of image. Yeah, I think it should be possible. But yeah, let me just try that. What the hell? Oh, you can create a QR code. Wow, this is interesting. So there is entire... mode here which you can use to show you can use it to create your own qr code and also text so i don't know why you would want to create a qr code maybe you want to put your phone number there yeah but yeah it is possible on this thing which is quite interesting i don't know why i haven't created my own qr code for however long this is let's see whether i have a lower res image of the logo nope i don't have it here so to the laptop again we go What did Steven say? Link to your mail back. <laughs> hmm. Maybe, yeah, the QR page. So it's on your laptop. Maybe businesses should get this, you know, so they can put the QR pay code, uh, peer, the QR pay QR code on the back of the laptop. So, you know, it's a POS. I think it would be a real waste to use this laptop as a POS, but, you know, it is one, one possible use, use scenario. Damn. Um,
Is it better now? I don't actually know. No, I think there is probably something with the images that I'm using or probably something with the settings. But definitely, it's, this is a very low res image and we still have this flickering. And even the animation itself has the flicker. I don't exactly know why. Some of the animations don't have the flicker. So, yeah, kind of odd. Chaos in space charging astronaut for purchase. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, this is developed for space. Maybe you can send it to space. And yeah, so last but not least, I think I want to show you guys the numpad. So yeah, this is number pad. And you also have Harmon Carden Sound with Dolby Atmos, which I think we should check out. I think, yeah, let's let's go to YouTube and check out some music, maybe. Or maybe not. I think I have the put the music on the pen drive. Oh, it sounds loud. I don't know whether you guys can hear, I don't think so. Uh, let me just turn off the noise gate, noise suppression compressor. There is, there is a little bit of punch to it. I kind of uh, surprised that there is this level of punchiness in a laptop speaker, but yeah, nothing too out of the ordinary. La. There are better sounding laptops like the M16. M16 is one very good sounding laptop. It's not a gun, it's a laptop. And yeah, I think that's it for the laptop. Probably we have a more in-depth look at it in an article. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, we have closed it. And it's still running, I don't know why. Oh, it's not. It's just decided to troll me, is it? When I just say it's running, stop running. Okay. Okay, let's put the laptop aside. But yeah, I think it should show you guys how it looks when the laptop stand, right? So yeah, it raises the laptop quite a nice angle, I would say. Uh, probably wouldn't use it like this, but yeah, you can if you want. And I think it would probably be best if you connect a secondary display with it raised up like this. Although one thing that I will note is that it seems to be in the way of most of the cooling vents. Uh, because you can see the vents are at the bottom here. But when you put it on the stand, actually most of the vents are obstructed. So not really sure. I think you have to make sure that the ergo lift is on the... The hinge here is on the block so that, you know, we still get some space underneath for it to intake air. Uh, yep. Actually, there's something else in the box. I didn't actually finish the unboxing before I checked out the laptop. Kind of. Oh, they actually went Velcro. Look. It's Velcro. It's not your usual glue wish. It's nice. Especially so because, you know, since I'm reviewing it, if someone opened it, opened the glue package before I did, it's not nice. You get stickers. Fleshy, fleshy stickers. How oh, the keyboard keys when you type? normal zenbook keyboard it's not the best uh, i have tried but good enough nice travel okay la a normal a good ish laptop keyboard but not the best very flashy stickers sticker bomb time is it sticker bomb if you like use it no you don't really have enough to sticker bomb the whole laptop la. but yeah it does look good And there's an envelope here which I need to tear. I don't think I'm supposed to tear this. It's only a single single opportunity. Should I tear this? I don't actually know. 
Or maybe I can just wiggle it out of there. Yeah, I guess I should just tear it. Oh, like a greeting card of sorts, I guess. It's a golden ticket to Mars. <laughs> Two decades has passed. Yeah, you actually have to. Two decades has passed since the Asus P6300 laptop traveled into outer space, searching for the unknown, testing the boundaries of technology and human courage. Ever since then, Asus laptops have accompanied pioneers to explore beyond the limits to go in search of incredible. The Asus Zenbook series sees beyond the horizon to explore new worlds and leap beyond, eh, leap boldly into the future with unprecedented power, speed, and imagination. Embrace the spirit of innovation and live a joyful digital life with this out of this world technology that the Zenbook series offers. There's a greeting card. <laughs> with a seal. Literally, it's sealed. That's that's literally overkill. But then again, nothing about this laptop is not overkill. I mean, look at the packaging for the for just for this, you know, you get like a space pouch sort of thing. So yeah, everything about this is definitely overkill. This is probably the most overkill, uh, even more overkill than the Zen Vision because at least the Zen Vision is something you can play with. This is just a greeting card in a very, very fancy package and something. And the fact that you have to tear it apart. Look at it. Very cool. I don't actually know what to do with this. But yeah. Let me just keep it safe. And yeah. That's it for this week's photo life, I guess. I'll just go through the comments and see what else is there. Fintin 2 laptop have two screens. PC just one screen. Yeah. If you actually check out the last year, I think. Oh, wait. No. Since. Two years ago, Asus has been developing dual screen laptops. The ScreenPad Plus is a very nice technology. Uh, if you guys check out the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo uh, and ZenBook Duo, they both have dual screens and that's actually a very nice laptop to check out if you are a multitasker. Uh, there's also the ROG the first Duo series which also has two screens and I guess it's like a competition between the two models, the ZenBook Duo and the Zephyrus Duo, to see who can make the better dual screen design. My guess of local pricing. <laughs> huh. I would say 6499. I think 6499 is a good, it's a very good pricing. But given that this is a special edition laptop, maybe 72? 72, I guess. Because I mean, it is a 12700H, so yeah, there's a high performance processor and it has 32 gigs of RAM, which is more than enough for most users. And the design, the immaculate design, this finish, this Zen Vision display, I think, I think if a very reasonable price for this kind of design would be 6499. But then again, this is a limited edition, a space edition laptop, so maybe 7299. Come on, can't be cheaper than a pocket fridge. <laughs> so that's actually part of the reason why I decided on 7299 because that's the premium pocket price. But then again, I can't afford that kind of money. But I do think that it will be around that price. Maybe or probably Asus might probably come up with a bundle or something which will increase the value but also increase the price. But yeah, I think that's, that's something we have to wait for these laptops to come to Malaysia to see what actually it is priced that because I don't know yet. Flow Z13, please. Flow Z13 should be very expensive. I mean, it's literally a ultra performance tablet. So yeah, that one I think will be even more expensive. But then again, that one is a gaming ROG laptop. So I wouldn't be surprised it's expensive. I mean, everyone knows about the ROG techs. So yeah, it is a real thing. <laughs> yep, I think that's it for this week. And I will see you guys next week with something else. So this week, oh yeah, I forgot to mention. <laughs> the Asus Artemis bag. So yeah, make sure to come back next week to see if you're the winner of this bag. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wait, I need to turn off the stream. Oh yeah, very awkward. Bye-bye.